Today's guest is the host of Raising Confident Teens podcast and the author of a book titled I Am Not Your ATM, a practical plan for teaching your teen to manage money. Welcome to the show, Rachel. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me, Toby. You know, I've had this, uh, I've had this appointment on my calendar for a while now, right? And I've been like, <laughs> yeah. oh, I can't wait. I can't wait to get on with him. <laughs> Wow, thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm so excited to be speaking with you also right now. I'm, I'm so sorry that we're, we're not able to, you know, um, schedule this earlier. But I'm, I'm super excited. I've been looking forward to this conversation. And thank you so much for staying connected, basically. And I also I love the way we know we engaged before we started recording. Also, it's so wonderful speaking to you so far already. And that's why I'm super delighted, you know, to be sharing this episode also with everyone out there, the listeners out there, because I'm super sure that everyone's going to learn so much from this. And after this conversation everyone's money skill and learning skill we improve you know way than um, way more than it was before we started recording actually yeah yeah awesome so you know i would love to learn about your your life journey like you you, you and your husband were in debt like you were buried in debt and after a while you were able to pay off all of this debt so is it possible for you to, to share this story with me like can you share us can you share with us how you were able to successfully pay off the debt and um, how you were able to become financially independent sure uh, well we started out you know like most young married couples you, th- you think that the world's going to be great everything's going to be perfect and Pretty soon we got ourselves into a lot of trouble because we had started a internet service provider. This was back before you, you probably don't have any memory of anything like this, but back in the early days of the internet, everybody had to go through a dial up service provider and you had to connect to that provider in order to get on the internet. And so we started a local internet service provider and it didn't take off as fast as we thought it would. And we ended up financing a lot of that with credit cards. And we got ourselves into $50,000 worth of debt by the time we sold that company. And it was a real struggle because we had no idea how we were going to pay that off. And we went round and round about, should we declare bankruptcy? Um, How are we going to do this? We went and talked to a lot of people that we really respected and every one of them told us, you got, there, there's no way you're going to be able to get this paid off. You guys need to declare bankruptcy. And we were very seriously talking about it. And we had even had the appointment to go meet with the attorney. And I just, we have this deal in our marriage that if one of us doesn't feel comfortable about something, we don't do it. And I just said, you know, I I just feel like we're supposed to pay this off. And I don't know how we're going to do it, but I just feel like we're supposed to. And so we canceled that appointment and we said, okay, we're going to pay it off. So we made the commitment when we saw no way out, right? And we said, we're going to do this. And, and you know, I know a lot of people have gone through bankruptcy and I don't put any condemnation on anybody that has done that because I understand the stress and the depression that fills you when you're in that dire of a situation. Right. So I don't, I don't hold any negative thoughts toward anybody that has gone through that. But for us, I just, it just felt like this is something we're supposed to do. And at the time we had no income. um, And through all of that, we had a lot of struggles. It took us five years. We were making less than $30,000 a year during that time. And, this was during the dot com crash. So my husband was in IT and we went through three layoffs in nine months. And every layoff, you know, he got a, a job, a, um, a cut in pay. And then at the t- the end of the last one, there was just nobody else hiring. And he ended up driving a taxi cab for like six years. And so that's that's what we were doing for most of the time when we were paying off the debt. And I feel like we could have gotten out of that a lot sooner if we had understood the power of mindset because we felt like we were such failures and, you know, we had job, we business loss, um, job loss after job loss after job loss. And we just felt like we can't do anything right. Nothing's working for us. 
you know, and we were living in the worst neighborhood in town. Uh, we were driving a car that cost us $1,500 and, you know, just really scrimping and pinching to get by. I remember one month we had, you know, our entertainment budget for the month was a dollar seven because that's how much it costs to rent a red box movie. You know, we had one red box <laughs> movie for entertainment that month. Um, and I think part of it that helped us get through that was we knew this is only temporary. Like this is not what we're going to have to do for the rest of our lives, you know, and we could see the end, even though that was a huge number, right. Starting out. Mm -hmm. And so that's our story, but we never told anyone our story for 20, almost 25 years, maybe. Um, we taught, financial classes in church and we would help people, but we, we were so ashamed of our story and I'm not even sure why, like, I guess we felt like we had messed up and we didn't want to tell people about it. But like you said, um, we have the raising confident teens podcast and we just, one day we just said, you know, we want to, we want to help. It seems like teens these days don't have a lot of life and leadership skills. And so we didn't know what we were doing. We just started making little videos. You know, this is how you do this. And, hey, let's share this concept with you about success. Or um, we just started doing little videos. And then my husband, you'll find this very funny, Toby. My husband said, let's start a podcast. It'll be easy. Wow. Yes. <laughs> and so that's how the podcast started. We just, yeah. the first few episodes were horrific. You know, I, I tell people, don't go listen to those. Don't listen to the old episodes because we were so <laughs> bad. Um, but we just started, let, let's just, let's just find interesting people who could share good mm -hmm. principles that teens, it'd be great for teens to learn while they're young and yeah. uh, just provide people with life skills. And through all of that, we have a Facebook community and I would ask, what do you wish you had learned as a teenager? And the number one answer I got over and over was, I wish someone had taught me about money. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, well, I know a little bit. <laughs> I can teach about <laughs> money. Um, yes. And so I, it started out as a challenge. We did a challenge in our group, uh, the money challenge, how to teach your teens about money. And after that, it, it just, I just felt in my spirit, you know, you should turn this into a book. And it's funny because I never, you know, some people would be like, I always wanted to be a writer. And I always, I was always writing all the time. I never, I'm a good writer, but it doesn't, it like drains me. It doesn't like make me feel like excited about life. And so just the fact that I could sit down and write the book and you know, like while I was writing, I would just like have another idea. I'm like, oh yeah, I should put that in there. So I, I it was totally meant to be, I think, because just the way it worked out. And so um, around that time when we did the challenge and bef right before we started writing the book, we um, took over the podcast one day, my husband and I, because normally it's me and one of the kids. And we just told our story. We're like, we're going to tell our story. And our parents, even our parents didn't know all that we had gone through. Like we hid it from everybody. Um, one of my aunts called me after she heard me speak on a podcast recently. And she's like, why didn't you tell any of us you were having so much trouble? She's <laughs> like, we thought you just liked to clip coupons. Um, yeah. But, yeah. you know, but I, She's like, we could, we would have helped you, but I'm like, you know, I'm glad that you're telling me this, but I think I needed to go through that struggle to be able to help other people. Right. Yeah, um, yes. yeah. So that is how all of the money stuff came out. I'm so happy and delighted that, you know, you went through that struggle, you went through that experience of life, and you're able to come out of it successfully well, and also using your lessons to, you know, to teach other people, like, you know, in order for them to avoid, you know, this kind of, you know, situation in life also. Right. But, if, yeah, but if, if, you were, if you were to, like, you know, reflect back, what would you say you, you learned the most from this experience, and how did it change your mindset about money? I learned that I am capable of way more than I thought I was. Um, and that I can do hard things. 
right? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you saw this part of our story when you saw our, um, the, the message I sent you, but we built a log home with our kids yeah. Um, yeah, so it's... about 10 years ago. We spent three and a half years building a log home, and it took us, it took us three and a half years. We lived in a tiny, tiny uh, travel trailer. 33 feet long while we built it. And that process was very healing for us. Like being out there in nature, working with our hands, seeing stuff like, Ooh, I did that. Right. Like, like we were talking about (laughs) before you started recording about how you can learn how to do so much online. Right. Like we had no construction experience. We, um, flew to the other side of the United States. We took a two day log home building class. It was all in the classroom. We didn't have any hands-on experience. And then we flew home and there were forums and YouTube and Google. And that's, that is <laughs> how we did most of it. Um, wow. and so that became very, uh, um, a, a period of great growth for us because, we, we learned you can do more than you think you can. We learned that, that if you can be a learner, you can accomplish most anything. If you're willing to learn, like yeah. so many people are like, I'm not good at math. I'm not good at technology. And, you know, we used to, th- there used to be this idea It's called fixed mindset, growth mindset. I don't know if you you're familiar with that, but like people used to think if you're not good at something, then you're never going to be good at anything. But they've come to realize that everybody is capable of improvement and growth. Right. And, and instead of saying, I'm not good at math, you say, I'm not good at math yet. Right. And that just totally uh, transforms your mindset and makes you realize I can, I can learn this. And we kind of got backed into a corner there because we started and we had to finish it. Cause nobody was going to buy a half built house. Right. No. So we would hit a wall. We'd be like, we don't know what to do here. Um, we had quite a few panic moments like, you know, we don't know what to do and we just had to figure it out. And, and that experience taught us a lot about ourselves. It taught us a lot about children because our kids were, were working with us. You know, we thought, Oh, yeah. Oh my word, they are going to need therapy after this experience. Mm-hmm. Cause we, we were worried we were messing them up. Right. We're expecting too much out of them, but, it, but the opposite happened. They, they thrived under that and they learned so much and their confidence increased. And we realized that there was a link between competence, like if you learn how to do things, you become a more confident person, right? Mm -hmm. So so it's like learning to drive. The first time you go to drive, you get in that car and you are so nervous and you're like, how do I put on the turn signal? And what do I do here? Right. And what do I do there? You, if you've been driving, you know, 10 years, you don't think about that. You just jump in and go. Right. And you're confident exactly. in your ability. Right. So the more experiences that you can give your kids or yourself where you can build competence, the more confident you will become. And that just builds on each other. It's called the confidence competence loop, which I did not even know that it was a thing. And when I, when we when we <laughs> named our raising confident teens, we didn't even realize that was actually an actual real thing. It's called the confidence competence loop, and it says the more confidence that you build, the more confident you become, and the more confident you become, the more willing you are to try new things, which makes you more competent, which makes you and just builds on itself. So. Yes. We we kind of stumbled upon this whole how to teach kids life and leadership and how to make them more confident people by accident because of mm-hmm. that experience. I, I love what you just said about, you know, the um, confidence, competence loop. Like, you know, at a point you start out with like, I don't know about this thing yet. Then you learn about it. You gain confidence in it. Then you, you know, you, it loops around and you get much more competent in it. You try out new things and you become more confident in it and competence increases also that way. And that way you become a much more better person and you're able to do more things. So you have more skills to work with in life. Right. Yeah. Think about a little kid yeah. learning to walk, right? When they're learning to walk, we let them fall down and we let them 
trying to, you know, different ways of doing it. And, you know, if we can just keep that attitude our whole life, you know, like they're not worried that you think they look stupid, that they fell, right? Because they're focused on what they're wanting to learn. They're wanting to learn how to walk, right? So along the way, when we, uh, probably about teenagers is when we start becoming so worried about what people think <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> that we don't want to try new things and because we're afraid we're going to look yeah. stupid. And then that just, mm-hmm. you know, but if you can become yeah. willing to, who cares what people think, right? <laughs> that's true. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, that's a big lesson I'm still learning up to now. Like I, when I'm reflecting, I tell myself in this, my under 30 years right now, I feel I'm under that kind of not pressure, but let's say I'm under that kind of um, mindset that's, Oh, I don't mess up anything in, I'm doing right now. Like, I don't make a fool out of myself in society, for example. And that has, that has, you know, denied me of trying out new things for a long while. Right. Even you know, starting, the pod, starting this podcast too, I delayed it for a long period of time because I didn't want to make a fool of myself. <laughs> but yeah, but you know, just as you said, I mean, you should look at the, be like a kid, look ahead of you and look at what you want out of life and just go after it and don't, don't care if you fall and people laugh at you or you mess up on the way. Just get back up and keep on going towards your goal. Yeah. yeah. And you, you've probably yes. found this, this concept here that I'm going to tell you is one that totally has transformed my life. It's called action brings clarity. So if you don't really know exactly what you're going to do, you can get yourself locked up, like you said, like you'll spend years preparing to launch the podcast, right? The the best way to learn to do a podcast is to do a podcast, right? So once you take that first step, you'll see clearer to take the next step and to take the step after that. And sometimes you end up totally not where you thought you were going to be. Right. Exactly. But yes. if you never took that first step, you wouldn't, you would get nowhere. Right. So mm. just take a step that's very true. and you can adjust. Yes. Right. That's very true. And that's why I, I love us to talk about, you know, the things also like I love us to, I love you to tell us some of the money skills that we like I, for example, I'm still very young <laughs> and teenagers could make use of in our everyday life. Like I want to, I want to build up that um, confidence and competence in terms of money skills and money management. Can you teach me how to do this? Yeah. So, so the number one complaint that most people have is I don't make enough money. And mm. it's a crazy complaint because they all make different amounts of money. They all live in different parts of the country. They all, yeah. you know, have different number of kids, different cost of living. How is that possible mm-hmm. that so many people have that same complaint? It's because they haven't learned to live within their means, right? You yes. know, if your boss were to come to you and say, I'm sorry, but we're having all kinds of financial troubles. We're going to have to cut everybody's pay 90 to 90% of what they're making. Would you stay there? Probably because you're comfortable there, yeah. right? And you would yeah. learn to live on less, right? That's true. So yeah. like when you get a job, come in with the mentality. Pretend like you're making 80% of what they're giving you. It's my, it's what I tell my kids. You know, only plan to live on 80% of it and mm-hmm. and and have a plan to save 10% for long-term retirement and stuff. And in our family, we give 10% away. So, so if you start your life with that, you know, before you get the car and the house and the, all the things that we get sucked into living with, you know, if you, if you start with that mentality, you don't, you, you don't, you're not trapped. Like many people say, I don't, I I don't, they don't start saving for retirement until they're in their thirties. Well, think about that 10 years that you lost. You know, if you look at compounding interest, that was worth a lot of money to you to wait 10 years, right? Because the earlier you start, the more powerful it is and the more money you will have. You know, I I think it was Einstein that called compound interest the eighth wonder of the world, right? Mm -hmm. So if you... Mm -hmm. If you can discipline yourself, which is sometimes the hardest to do, you know, you, you can build great wealth, give generously, 
take care of your family and their needs, right? The problem is we we get a new job, we hear the salary, and we plan our expenses to totally match that salary, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. And it's very, very yes. dangerous. Um, mm. The way we teach teens about money is we start when they're fifth or sixth grade, which 10, 11 years old, and we start turning over parts of the budget to them that are related to them. So it might start small. We start really, really small to get them used to the idea. Like um, maybe you go out for ice cream once a week with your kids, right? Yes. And you go to the ice cream store. Everybody goes to the line. Mom or dad pays, right? Mm. So what if you at the beginning of the month said, here's your ice cream money for the month. You are in charge of it. And if you get to the end of the month and you don't have the money when we go out for ice cream, you don't get any ice cream, right? <laughs> that yeah. that might hurt them a little bit. Yes. But not as much as it will hurt when they're 18, 19 years old moving out on their own and have no clue of the concept of how money works and you just let them go, right? <laughs> and they've got That's to figure true, it out. Yeah. And then they could get themselves into thousands of dollars worth of heartache. Right. Mm -hmm. So we we start small like that, maybe school lunches, something like that, Mm -hmm. that if it hurt, if, if they mess up, they're messing up in a safe environment at home. We're like, you know what? Mm -hmm. So what if they spent all their school lunch money on something they shouldn't have, they can pack a lunch, right? That's not Mm -hmm. going to hurt them too much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And then every year we add their salary goes up and what they're responsible for four goes up. So the, by the time my kids graduate high school, they've been managing parts of the budget for themselves for years. So like clothes, makeup, toiletries, gasoline, haircuts, school supplies, um, restaurants, you know, a lot of people go out to eat once a week with their family and mom and dad pays. Well, we, you know, we don't start out with restaurants because that might get awkward when everybody else has eaten and your kid can't eat. <laughs> but what, you know, once they've been doing it a while, they yeah. get restaurant money and, and, you know, they become a lot more mindful about what they order on the menu when they know yeah. if I save it here, if I, if I get something that doesn't cost quite as much here, then maybe I'll have more money for clothes or, for fun with my friends, right? Otherwise, it's just mom and dad's money. It doesn't mean a thing, right? I could spend it on their own. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and then that yeah. just makes mom and dad frustrated because you feel like they're not appreciating what I'm doing for them, right? Mm. You don't appreciate yes. these clothes I bought for you. Why are you, I bought you these brand new clothes and they still have their tags on them and they're laying on your floor and you never wore them, <laughs> right? If they start having to spend yeah. their money because it becomes their money, right? Mm. You're spending the yes. same amount of money you probably would have on them right Mm -hmm. but in their mind it's their money you're just transferring yeah you're they're the owner of it right Mm -hmm. um so they get years of practicing that you know a lot of schools are coming out i don't know how it is in nigeria but in america a lot of schools are coming out with financial literacy programs and i love the idea that they're at least becoming more mindful of it but the problem is it may be half a credit you know, for the whole high school. So maybe they had one lesson on how to make a budget. If they'd learned that one lesson in ninth grade, do you really think they're going to remember it when they graduate and move out on their own? No, it'll be like me, me and you. We're trying to figure out WordPress, right? Someone told you what to do four years ago, how to, how to put that on your website. But it's four years later. I don't know what they told me. Right. I forgot to know. <laughs> yeah, I forgot a month later, yeah. right? Right. Mm-hmm. So, so they get a month after month after month of practice, right? Mm-hmm. So they have yeah. to learn to budget. They have to learn to reconcile. They have to learn, you know, sinking funds. Like, you know, in in a, in the states, some people their car insurance comes out once every six months instead of every month. Yeah. If you don't put aside the money every month. You're not going to have it when it comes due, right? So yes, kids learn. my kids learn that with hair, the girls especially, with haircuts. We don't get a haircut every month, but when we get them, they're not necessarily cheap, right? So if I need to put aside yes. a little bit every month, you know, a lot of these concepts, they naturally learn them by doing it like this. 
So that, you know, they learn cause, cause you, no one teaches you any of these lessons. You move out on your own, you get a credit card or a debit card and you just go crazy and spend. You don't realize how much things really are, you know, how all this adds up $5 here, $5 there. And then you get a statement and you have a hundred transactions. Like, what do I do with that? Right. But if you yeah, start out, at, you know, 12, 13 years old, Oh, I only have three transactions on my card. I know how to reconcile that. Mm. And then the next year I might have seven, you know, Before we continue on the show, I would love to tell you about a podcast I found called My Crazy Divorce. This show will blow your mind. This show is hosted by a guy called Tom Milligan. Every week, his guests share the ins and outs of their crazy divorce stories. And I promise you, you won't believe some of the crazy stories you will hear on this podcast. There are a lot of stories about lying, about cheating, about fighting. There are even stories about attempted murder, surprise polygamy, and much more that will just blow your mind. You can check this podcast out on every platform where you listen to podcasts. And even, you can just check it out on mycrazydivorce.com. That is mycrazydivorce.com. For example, your, your kids are blessed to have you as parents because you could teach them all of this. But why do you think it's not a common thing that we learn, you know, in all our households? Why do you think that, you know, it's not a, like a normal standard thing that each parent teaches their children? Yeah, because they are, well, it's kind of a taboo topic, especially in the States. Like, our parents didn't talk about money for a lot of people, so we don't talk about money and... and that's not true of everyone because my parents did teach us about teach me about money. Uh, my husband's parents taught him about money, but he says he doesn't remember any of it because it was theoretical. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just a lecture for kids. I feel like you, it needs to be hands on, interactive, relevant to their life. Right. True. Yeah. If I just say, hey, when you get a job, you need to start investing for the future. What does that mean? Right. How do I do that? What does that mean? Um, yeah. so I, I think that's part of it is generationally, it has been a very taboo topic. I, I have, I know people whose parents were presidents, president of the bank and never taught them about wow. money and they got out on their own, bounced a lot of checks, um, ended up with a sick baby, uh, had to declare bankruptcy, had their house repossessed, right? That could have all been eliminated if their parent had just said, Let, let's talk about it. And you don't have to tell your kids how much money you make. I don't tell my kids how much money I make, but they can still learn these concepts. Um, yes. I think another reason is a lot of people were not taught about money. And so they are not doing very well themselves. And so they feel like, who am I to tell my kids about money? Cause I am a failure, right? Or they yeah, feel like they're is. a failure. But that's quite interesting. I would love to know how to break this chain. Like, for example, if for generations past, our parents have not been teaching us how to spend money and we, you know, keep on making them error. And right now, I'm about to start my own family, but I still feel inadequate to teach my children about money because I have no idea about money. Right. What, what, what can I do with this inadequacy and still teach my children effectively how to manage money? Right. Well, you are living in the best time ever <laughs> because Why? you have podcasts. You have books, you have all of this free information. Back when we were digging out of debt, there were some books, but not, not a whole, whole lot in the personal finance. You know, there was a lot more like investing. Like I just wanted to know how to do the budget, right? Uh, There are so many, uh, and a lot of people your age are, there's a lot of personal finance creators who are your age that have podcasts about money. Um, That's true. So I, if I had to do it over again, I would, I would immerse myself into learning. Like, cause we've talked about what, how, what big difference learning makes f- for you. Like you can learn about anything. And That's true. if you could, you can automate as much of your finances as possible. That's a big thing. Like, do you have 401ks where you live? Do they do that? Um, no. Investment. No, no, so, so. Yeah, 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 so investments. Right. Okay. So if you have that automatically deducted from your paycheck, mm-hmm. 
straight into like a retirement account, you will be less likely, like less likely to try and go in there and change that because it's too much work, right? If you yes. automate it, it's easier to just to let it be automated, right? You're, yeah, yes. you're not going to, you're going to find another way to get the money rather than go try and figure out how to undo that deduction from your yes. account. Um, That's very true. So as much of your life as you can automate, I would automate, like, you know, we automate a lot of our bills and they automatically come out. Um, automate as much as your, of your savings as you can and pretend like it's not there, right? Mm-hmm. The very first step I would tell a young adult um, is to try and get one month ahead. A lot of people talk about emergency funds. I would just focus on one month. A lot of people pay this month's bills with this month's salary, and that's a recipe for disaster because after you pay your bills, you have $2 left in your account and you're trying to figure out how to survive. But if you can just get one month ahead, that relieves so much of the stress and the pressure and gives you margin, right? Mm, so yes. do take on a few extra jobs, work overtime, do whatever you can just to get one month ahead and pretend like you're not one month ahead when you're because a lot of people will be like, well, I got extra money. Let me just go buy that shirt. But but if you can just get one month ahead and get to the point where you're paying this month's bills with last month's income, that especially helps if for people have variable incomes, right? And of course. tell your money where to go. Like when I was in money's trouble, I would worry that I, you know, I really need clothes, but I'm worried that I'm spending the clothing money um, when I spend the clothing money, I'm not going to have money for groceries, right? But if you knew exactly, like, this is how much is in the grocery budget. This is how much is in the clothing budget. This is how, you know, then when you spend the clothing money, you don't feel guilt, right? Mm, that's true. But that's if you true. have no clue where your money's going, then who knows? <laughs> who knows yeah. what you just spent? <laughs> yes. One could have spent these rent, for example, on clothes, for example. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Wow. I mean, these are amazing tips. But are there like some ways that children also could invest their money? Like, are there like some ways that I could teach my future children how to put money into a place to, you know, maybe make it work for them, for example? Or should I just teach them how to save money instead? You know, I, I'm i big on, for for kids, we have what's called a Roth IRA here. And if they earn an income... Uh, either at a job or self-employment or working for their parents who are entrepreneurs, they can put this money in this account and it's, it's taxed before it goes in. But if they are are making less than 12,000 a year, it doesn't get taxed at all. So it, and it grows the whole time it grows when they take it out, they don't have to pay any taxes. So it grows tax free. Um, I, I, I'm a fan of those for kids. I I'm telling my kids, I'm not sure they're all listening, but I think one of them is like, I'm like, when you um, buy your first house, buy a duplex. Do you have duplexes? Or it's like, yeah, Yeah. buy a duplex and Mm -hmm. live in one side and rent out the other side to pay your mortgage and just, you know, stay in there a while. Maybe, Maybe buy another one, you know, like, like real estate. I feel like real estate is a good investment um i'm all about diversifying my husband actually has a crypto podcast so he he... (laughs) that's cool (laughs) so we're we're in everything a little bit of everything um Mm -hmm. but i think the number one place to start investing in is to invest in yourself like because that is worth so much right um a lot of people will spend hundreds of dollars on cable television or something that doesn't really move them ahead. Right. But they don't want to spend $10 on a book. Right. Like think about what are your priorities? You know, where, where do I, where do I, you need to learn to be a good long-term thinker. Right. If you're going to handle money well, if you're going to handle your life well and get to the end of it and say, I, I did that good. Right. <laughs> so, mm, so, exactly. you know, think, think about well, and I'm not saying don't ever watch TV because I I can understand, you know, people like to relax and 
but don't make that something you do all the time and, you know, spend some time investing in yourself and putting money in, you know, I think it's Brian Tracy that said, put 3% of your income into yourself, which I think is a good, you know, it's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. A big investment to, to make actually. Yeah, yes. yeah. And, and, and talking about talking about making investments, all of us talk about your book because your book is a wonderful investment that we could make to ourselves also. And your book is titled "I Am Not Your ATM." So can you tell us you know, what inspired you to write this book and share with the listeners, you know, what they could learn or expect to learn from this book too? Right. So the book came about. Like I said, we were very very nervous about our story. We didn't tell anybody our story. Um, mm. But then it came out like, you know, we could really help a lot of people with our story. And so we just kind of explained how we teach our kids, which I, you know, told you, you could go out right now and and do that with your kids. You know, you don't even have to buy the book. I mean, you could buy the book if you wanted for more details and exactly how do you do this and what do you do in this situation. But I have given the listener enough information that they could form a plan to teach their kids about money, right? Um, Yeah. So... So it became because I was always hearing people say, my, my kids act like I'm an ATM, right? They're always asking me for money and they don't appreciate money. You know, we don't have money conversations at our house, really, uh, like that. My kids don't ask me for money. They get their salary once a month and I don't even touch it because I automated it. It goes 10% into their savings, the rest into their checking or debit card. And yeah. You know, occasionally something may come up that was not f- foreseen, right? Like, oh, we had this unexpected expense. But for the most part, you, once you get doing this a while, you know how much your kids, sp- you spend on your kids, right? Yeah, um, that's true. Yeah. So I just, I don't ever hear that, you know, mom, can I have money for this? And, and the one thing that I, my kids love doing money like this because it gives them control, which every teenager wants, right? Like no teenager wants to say, I have to go ask my mom if she can give me some money, right? They would rather just whip out the wallet, pay for it themselves, <laughs> look cool, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember my brother one time when he, was, he wasn't a teenager. He was probably 10. He somehow got $10 for doing something. And he thought he would be so cool. He went to the candy store and blew it all on his friends. Cause it, if, if he felt like a big man, right. Whipping out the- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we all feel like that to a degree, like, but it gives them control. They don't have to ask, you know, can I spend it on a pack of gum? They, you know, they, they, they can. They have that liberty to spend the money or do what they want it. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So I would love to know, like, what are some, some vital lessons that all parents out there are meant to learn or teenagers out there when it comes to, you know, handling money or, you know, dealing with, you know, money management and savings and things like that? What are, like, some vital lessons that you've learned so far in life that you believe every parent should know about and every teenager should know about? Yeah. I believe that it's a journey. You're not going to teach them everything they need to know in a month. So, you know, hmm. it's like driving a car. Like... Hmm. When I teach my kids to drive, we start out in the parking lot down the road and I don't let them go near other cars. <laughs> and then we go to a subdivision where there's, you know, houses in the street. And then we go to a road that's not too busy. And then we go to a busier road and then we go into town. And then we go out on the interstate and then we go to Atlanta, right? Right. but for most kids they may start in the parking lot their parents are like hey you know let's do you know we'll we'll talk about money a little bit when they're little and maybe some parents do the savings giving spending jars or envelopes right which i think is a good start but not very realistic because as adults do you get to like save 10%, give 10% and below 80%. No, you have. No. <laughs> and I no. think that gives no. them an unrealistic <laughs> expectation of that. They're going to be allowed to blow 80% of their income. <laughs> right. <laughs> but most yes. people like they kind of start in the parking lot, but then nothing happens. And then they go straight out to the Atlanta freeway at night on the rain, you know, in the rain on the, at night. Right. So, That's dangerous. so yeah. there's so many 
teachable moments that we have with our kids while they're in our house that you could be teaching them. Just take advantage of it and, you know, find what they're interested in. Like, yeah. oh, That's you're interested true. in uh, this certain company? Let's look up their stock, you know. Mm-hmm. Let's explain yeah. the stock market that way. Let them learn to make their own money. Let them start little businesses if they want. Um, it's a great way to learn about money. And nowadays there's a lot of things you could do as a kid that you couldn't do when we were kids because of the internet, right? You can make jewelry and sell it online. You could do print on demand t-shirts. You could raise chickens and sell eggs. You know, you could, a lot of things little kids can do. Um, one of my kids started a small engine repair business when he was 11. Uh, he just Googled it, YouTubed it because we knew nothing. Right. He would just people would give him lawnmowers that they couldn't get to work and he would just work on them and fix them and flip them and sell them. Um, Let let them do these kinds of things, but don't make them feel like they have to do it forever. Right. Let them do it for a season and like, okay, we're on to something else because they're kids and that's how they figure out what they want to do and what they like to do. You know, he did that for a couple of years and he just said, I don't want to do it anymore. And I was like, you're making good money. But but he just, <laughs> that's not where he wants to be. So, you know, I have to respect that. Um, mm-hmm. I've had other kids, they'd be, you know, I don't buy everything for my kids. I let them try and figure things out on their own because I have five kids and that gets expensive if you buy everything. <laughs> like, like they had a trip for school that they could go on to an amusement park and... They're like, can I go? And I'm like, sure, but you're going to have to come up with the money. So she was like, how about I, I'll make these three desserts. Um, this is how much I'll charge. Can we post on Facebook on your profile that I'm going to do this? And she took orders and made money. That's an easy pop-up shop that most any kid could do, right? Because people love yeah. to buy from kids who are trying to earn money, right? So That's true, that's very smart also. Yeah. So let them yes. let them figure stuff out. Don't always swoop mm-hmm. in to rescue them. Yeah. Wow, I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that. And how do we deal with failure? Like, you know, why you explain all of this? Um, I noticed that, you know, for example, we could try something out and fail at it, for example. How, how, do, how would you advise us to deal with failure when we hit that rock bottom at a point or when we are you know, able to move forward with what we are you know, trying to do or achieve with our money, for example? People fear, fear failure so much and it holds them back right? Failure is your friend. Like it's going to teach you so much. The lessons that I learned the most from in my life were not the things that came easy. It was the times when I had to really work hard and figure things out and struggle. And when I look back at the most impactful times of my life, it was times I went through stuff like that. Um, So don't be so quick to swoop in and rescue your kids when they say they blew all their money on a cheap toy that you knew they shouldn't have bought and they bought it anyway, (laughs) let them sit in that for a little while because it's going to happen as an adult if you don't, right? They're going to, that's true. Um, and the, the more you can let them see that that's just a part of life. People, kids have become so, I just interviewed this woman on my podcast the other day and she wrote a book, um, about parenting And she worked for many years in the school system. And she said there were more parents than not that were always coming to the rescue for their kids. And their kids were so used to being rescued that they could not function whenever anything came, anything became difficult, right? You want your kids to be able uh, to handle things, to be resilient, to be able to figure things out, right? That's, that's a, Yes. That's a great skill. The The more important skills are those kind of skills. Can you be a problem solver? Can you be a learner? Right. Can you handle disappointment? And I think the biggest way to let your kids see that is how do you handle disappointment? Do they see you throw a fit and scream and holler and, or do they see you um, sit down and be, be, you know, it's all right to be upset for a little while and be like, man, that didn't work out the way I wanted, but, get up and move on. Right. Cause you're going to have, you're a human living in this world. You're going to have hard times. It's just a part of it. Mm. Wow. I love that so much, Rachel. I mean, 
I have been so blessed just listening to you. I don't have kids yet. For very soon I will have kids. And I, I'm learning so much already, you know, in preparation for becoming a parent, actually, to teach my children how to. I'm already imagining to my head, I'm going to open back accounts for them and get the savings account and the old credit card or something for them to spend. Or no, a debit account where they can spend and get their money at monthly allowance and how to make them confident and, you know, competent when it comes to money management. And that same way, I also become much more competent and, you know, confident in my own spending habits also. So yeah. I really love it. So uh, what's the best way for, for listeners out there to get across to you, to b- get your book, to listen to your podcast, to maybe ask you more questions that we're able to cover? Sure. Um, I have actually set up a page just for your listeners. If you go to rachelmurphycoaching.com slash mirror talk, I have a page on there. If you say like, huh, that's an interesting way to teach your kids about money. I would like to learn more about that. The very first step I would tell you to do is do not go to your kids and say, Hey, I just learned what we're going to do. I want you to sit in this (laughs) row and think about it. Um, I have a spending tracker on there and I want you to sit there and write down every time you spend money on something related to your kids. Say you bought them new jeans, write down jeans. It cost this much money. It was on this date. You know, Mm. we went out for ice cream. It cost, you know, about this much per person on this day. Just keep start keeping a a log of what you're spending on your kids and how often you do it. Do that for a little while. And that will give you a pretty good idea of how much you spend. And so you can maybe turn over one of those small categories, right? I wouldn't start with clothing to start with. I'd start with something small. Um, turn over something small with them that they can just start getting their feet wet. And then also on that page, I will have uh, a link to where you can buy my book on Amazon, um, a list of my top three favorite finance books for teens and a link to the podcast. That's great. Thank you so much for sharing this. I mean, I'm going to put all of this link and information in the show notes of this episode. So I encourage everyone to click on the links, to visit your website, so to get the book. It's available on Amazon and also more details are on your website so for right. and, to get the book from. Yeah, so, and, and yeah. you can follow me on the socials. Rachel Murphy Coaching is my social yes. link. That's true. I'll, I'll put all of that also in the show notes. I encourage everyone to just get across to Rachel and she's a wonderful person and she's going to teach you a lot about money management and helping your teens also to raise up to, you know, get that confidence that they need when it comes to money spending. Thank you so much, Rachel. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you for having me, Toby. I had a good time. Wow. You made it to the very end of this episode. Thank you so much for listening. I'm grateful for your time, your love, and your contributions. Subscribe, like, review, and share this podcast. God bless you. Bye.